breaks the power of sin and darkness, whose love is mighty and so much stronger, the King of glory, the King above all kings. Who shakes the whole earth with holy thunder, who leaves us breathless in awe and wonder, the King of glory, the King above all kings. This is amazing grace, this is unfailing love, that you would take my place, that you would bear my cross, you laid down your life, that I would be set free, Jesus I sing for all that you've done for me. our chaos back into order who makes the orphan a son and daughter the king of glory the king of glory who rules the nations with truth and justice shines like the sun in all of its brilliance the king of glory the king above all kings this is amazing grace this is unfailing love that you would take my place that you would bear my cross you lay down your life that i would be set free jesus i sing for all that you've done for me Worthy is the Lamb who was slain. Worthy is the King who conquered the grave. Worthy is the Lamb who was slain. Worthy is the King who conquered the grave. Worthy is the Lamb who was slain. Worthy is the King who conquered the grave. Worthy is the Lamb who was slain. Worthy, worthy, oh, this is amazing grace. This is unfailing love. That you would take my place. That you would bear my cross. You'd lay down your life. That I would be set free. Jesus, I sing for all that you've done for me. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise you, God. Hallelujah. There's nothing worth more that will ever come close. No thing can compare. You're our living hope, your presence, Lord. I've tasted and seen of the sweetest of loves when my heart becomes free and my shame is undone. Presence, Lord. Holy Spirit, you are welcome here. Come flood this place and fill the atmosphere. Your glory, God, is what our hearts long for to be overcome by your presence. Lord, your presence, Lord, there's nothing, there's nothing worth more that will ever come close, no thing can compare, you're our living hope, your presence. heart becomes free and my 
your power fall let your voice be heard come and change our hearts as we stand on your word holy Oh, 
show us your glory. Yes, Lord, show us your glory. Lord, show us your glory. Show us your glory. Father God, we thank you, Lord, for another day of life, Lord. We've gathered together, Lord, to be a part of this glory. And I pray for uh, your children, my brothers and sisters in Christ, Lord, that you go before us. Allow us to have the ears to hear, the hearts that are going to be open to your word, to receive your glory. I thank you for this opportunity. We thank you, Lord, for blessing us, Lord with the things that we need. May we focus on you and may your word again land on good soil this morning. And it's on Jesus' precious name that everybody said, Amen. Amen. Well, good morning, church family. Why don't we uh, greet one another, say hi to someone. Um, our littles are going to be heading out at this time. Okay, 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 okay. I said say hi, not catch up, not fellowship. You guys can do that afterwards. It's hi, good morning. My name is so-and-so. Good to see you. Not what you had for dinner last night and what's the lunch menu. That's for after service. Man, you church people. That's a good thing because that's the family of God. This is the family of Christ. And so we see our brother and sister, you know, and that's what we end up doing. We ended up catching up. But real quick, I got a couple announcements. Uh, this morning uh, was, a real, was a real special uh, morning for uh, me and Rosemary. Uh, our number five, uh, which is our fifth daughter, uh, she uh, went to Hume Lake. What a blessing. Um, a part of that blessing was uh, some folks here in the, in the church helped uh, make sure that happened. So what a, what a tremendous blessing. But this is our first time literally detaching ourselves from number five. She's gone everywhere with us. When we had events and stuff, you know, regardless if it was junior high or high school, she was there. So this is our first time. Um, Yeah, it was, it was, it was definitely a moment. But there was also other kiddos, uh, part of our church uh, family that went out as well. So this week, if you can, be in prayer for those kids, uh, because they're going to be experiencing some tremendous blessings uh, on top of new friendships and stuff like that. But the theme Rosemary shared with me uh, this morning for this week for the kiddos is the character of God through the eyes of Moses. And so it's going to be a really neat opportunity for these young men and young ladies. So we pray that the same glory, same spirit that we are surrounding ourselves with will surround them. And when they come back home, they will be on fire and they will be uh, more motivated to share the word of God. Amen. Amen. Then this Thursday, uh, for those who have signed up to help with our uh, uh, circus tent, I mean our tent out there. Uh, this Thursday, we're going to be um, asking for all hands on deck. If you signed up, come on out. Um, if you want to make a day of it, Pastor Wally says, 
Let's make a day of it. Let's have a day of fellowship. We do have the guys who are going to be doing the majority of the work coming up from the flatlands to, to be up here to help uh, 5 o'clock. They're going to be here at 5 o'clock and they're going to be doing the majority of, the, of that work. Um, and after those men get done, they're obviously going to be hungry, so there's also going to be more uh, help needed to set up and stuff like that for those guys. And then obviously, uh, Saturday is our uh, CMA um, event, so we're really looking forward to that. I'm looking forward to that because I'm going to be uh, the, the newbie, the new guy on the block experiencing that event. But that also goes along with what we have been talking about moving forward, pushing forward, opening up these grounds, bringing people here. And it's not about getting the numbers, guys. It's about getting people here to hear about him. It's sharing his story. It's not about, oh, what uh, Calvary Chapel Mountain Center, we have this and we have that. No, it's about who we have and who uh, is in charge of our lives. So it's a great opportunity to use uh, this property 2021 looking back of those things of the past and looking forward amen, amen. what else do we have father's day is also coming up yes so no gathering service just give you guys a heads up so you guys can plan accordingly uh father's day will be coming up uh in a couple of weeks so just be in prayer for that and we're also going to be in prayer how we can honor our father's year. I've heard uh, Pastor Wally encourage uh, some of you guys in reading ahead. And I want to continue to encourage you guys on the same token as we're journeying through the beginning. Currently we are going to be attempting to get into Genesis chapter 3. And then on Wednesday nights as you guys are journeying through those chapters and those verses if there's any questions on Wednesday night hey let's talk about it. Let's share uh, what those scriptures uh, mean to you. Or maybe you don't understand. And just pray how the Spirit leads so we can grow together. That's kind of along the lines of discipleship. Having like-mindedness in Christ. But before we jump into chapter 3 this morning, I want to kind of go back a little bit on the image that was shared with us last week. That image is of marriage. In the beginning, God, creator, designer, gardener, Yahweh, he formed and breathed a living soul, man. God saw it was good. In fact, the scripture tells us that it was very good. Then his story unfolds and God recognizes that something wasn't good. Notice God didn't wait around or avoid the problem, church. This points us in the direction of consistency. So how does God deal with what wasn't good? Well, in Genesis 2, 19, the Lord said, It's not good that man should be alone. So we learned last Sunday uh, with some kind of cool overhead photos that uh, God created man's best friend and all those other creepy things and still it was not good because there was not a comparable helper for man. You see, there was Mr. and Mrs. Giraffe, Mr. and Mrs. Beaver, but there was not an equal for Mr. Adam. Again, here comes the consistency of God. Seeing that when something is wrong, he intervenes. When something is not good, he intervenes. Adam goes into a deep sleep, and he is resting in the Lord. The great physician performs surgery to remove flesh of his flesh and bone of his bone. Handcrafting woman, just like Adam in the likeness and value of God. And I just want to share with you guys too, there might be some individuals who might not feel the value by God or maybe by other people. 
Oh, if we had a, if I had a hundred dollar bill, I wish. Um, but if I had a hundred dollar bill and I crumple it up, and I just say, you know, this is this is a hundred dollar bill. You know, I, I don't need it, and I just throw it out there to you guys. Would you guys see say that? Oh, it's, there's no value in it anymore. It's all it's ruined. It's it's sprinkled. It, you know, it's, the sweaty palms touched it, and I don't want that. Well, you would basically unfold that bad boy and iron it out, you know, and, and then the value is still the value. You would see that. And that's what God sees with you, with your family, with your loved ones, with your friends, with your children. What a great opportunity that we have resting in the Lord. There is a value in that church. And I want to just give you a little bit of an encouragement there. You don't feel the value. You don't feel like you're in the likeness, that you're not loved. You are loved. You are valued. Then the Lord presents woman to the man. And as the wedding bells are ringing, we can see the surrounding witnesses of the animal kingdom cheering and celebrating. You know, because I am a dad and, and this automatically... Uh, sends my mind into uh, the Lion King and that one moment where all the animals are there and there's you know uh, Simba getting you know getting acknowledged and it's like all the the soundtrack of that 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 moment and here I see Adam being presented you know by God his wife and the animal kingdom there and it's like oh this is that moment you know and that that moment I shared you know wow that's whoa man that's where we get the woman from but that's that moment that adam experienced from there adam and his equal walk into the sunset and live happily ever after the end if it was only that easy right now we know that our body is the physical tent and flesh that associates with the elements of people, places, and things around us in the world. And our heart, our soul speaks of our mind and emotions that relates to people, places, and things. Then there is our spirit that separates us from all other living creatures and that of the world, connecting us to God himself and that same spirit will live forever so why am i bringing this up why am i talking about this this morning well because we did learn about a uniqueness of marriage and that god joined together man and woman and for them to leave father and mother the in-laws and to cleave to each other becoming one in body soul and spirit this is our example of marriage and even though it was created by God which was good placed in the perfect setting the garden paradise holy matrimony a match made in heaven again what could possibly go wrong the beginning of chapter 3 is always also associated with husband's roles as the head of the household or the priest and leadership of his home and how the husband should be teaching his wife in the type of order. However, I'm led to share the basic understanding within these few scriptures. And not in the light of the 20th century, uh, women, we, we are independent now and we speak up. You know, it's nothing to kind of glamorize that. But it's truly to focus on the foundation of the Lord, ladies, guys. There is simple things, three elements, body, soul, and spirit. That's what I'm going to be focusing on this morning. Depend solely on the Lord, those three elements. When those three elements mirror one another, it is a reflection of what God has joined together. Again, body, soul, and spirit. 
As time passes, the importance of focusing on the Lord is critical in mirroring those elements as a part of the foundation of the Lord. Church, don't miss this. I know it might sound like I'm kind of uh, off topic and, and not in the Word, but I am. I'm giving you the backstory. I'm giving you an introduction of what we're about to face, what's about to begin. This chapter, sin is entered into the world. And if we're not prepared with the backstory, if we're not prepared guarding our hearts, seeking the Lord, when sin comes into the camp, we're going to miss it. So we need to know how to prepare. We need to see these little things creep in. And we as men and women of God, we need to have our spiritual lenses to see those things. We need to be seeking the Lord wholeheartedly. Not allowing emotions to cast a shadow in judgment or in our behaviors. Turning away from evil and doing good. How do we do that? By searching for peace and working to maintain it. 1 Peter 3.11 But what does that look like, though? You know, me and Rosemary were invited to a pastor's wise fellowship. And one of the spouse used the illustration of the daughter excited to see dad. And uh, welcomes him when he comes home from work. The daughter shares with excitement and of the need for dad's help with this or that. Or curious how dad's day was. Or excited to share about her day with dad in comparison. So the mere image, you guys, reflects to the father of the same excitement, of the same motivation. You guys see that? Daddy, daddy, you're home. Oh, wow. Oh, that's awesome, you know, and get that big old hug and embrace. Daddy, guess what I did today? What, what, what? Oh, I did this and I did this, and she goes on. Um, this is not part of uh, me dis disconnecting because my daughter's gone, all right, guys, okay? <laughs> Tell you that right now. But this is for all of us. And so she's all excited and she shares with him. And, and then he's like, oh, oh, that's so cool. And, well, how was your day, Dad? Oh, my day wasn't that exciting. But, you know, I did this. Wow, no way. So that mere image, that mere uh, reflection, it does motivate. And it gets our attention. First body, the physical attention. Despite being tired, he's energized in being needed wanted the soul of the daughter wanting the connection of the father and the father wanting the connection from the daughter as for the spirit that spirit is what has been instilled from the lord through dad through mom through this marriage the foundation of god's love so wives and husbands yes you had a long day Difficult it was. But remember what your marriage was founded on. Wives, don't get excited for, for him to be home to throw out the trash that he should have done yesterday. <laughs> or husbands walking in from work excited to smell, mmm, she's cooking dinner, and then plop yourselves on the couch to watch the game. No. You see what that reflects? You see what that mirrors? We can see the difference towards each other. Remember who you get your strength from. Remember we are serving the Lord who has wonderfully and fearfully created you. Body, soul, and spirit. Because if we lose that focus, church, there is obvious tendencies of reflecting two out of the three elements needed to mirror God. Just body and physical being there isn't going to be a, a good combination. You're still lacking something. And that's when God says, it's not good. And eventually, if you keep going down that path, you're going to be holding on by a thread of one out of the three, which causes the integrity to weaken and compromises the foundation 
and will eventually crumble and fall. Within this congregation, there is easily, easily, well over 200 years of marriage experience. Think about that. 200 years of marriage experience within this church. Each different in their own ways. But still the experience of the foundation testing through time. Body, soul, and spirit. Within this congregation we have many testimonies of how the Lord has shown His grace to those husbands, me included, who have fallen short. Mercy to the high expectancy or standards of wives. And God pours Himself into the repented marriages and families and individuals. Whether you are married or not, we have all been given God's Word to remind us how we are to live. 2 Corinthians 1, 22, 21 and 22. Now he who, ex who establishes us with you in Christ and has anointed us in God, who also has sealed us and given us the Spirit in our hearts as a guarantee. 1 Corinthians 2, 10 through 13. But God has revealed them to us through his Spirit. For the Spirit searches all things, yes, the deep things of God. For what man knows the things of man of a man except the Spirit of... Uh, I got a typo here. Of, where am I? The Spirit of the man which is in him, even so no one knows the things of God except the Spirit of God. Now we have received not the Spirit of the world, but the Spirit who is from God, that we might know the things of God and have been freely given to us by God. Now, Paul shares here of this, minist this mystery of wisdom that is referred to knowing that Jesus Christ, our Savior, died for us. And through His Spirit that is in us, we obtain wisdom and understanding far greater than the world can understand. So with a stronger view and perspective of our individual responsibility, the camera now pans to a Geico-type commercial of this talking snake like referred to as Satan. How do I know that? Well, the Bible tells me. Here, Revelations chapter 12, verses 7 through 9, it shares... And then in Ezekiel 28, it also tells us that Satan, before his fall, was an angel of the highest rank of prominence. It even shared that Satan himself was a vessel, a leader of worship in heaven. Oh, and don't think it was some scaly creature. No, the scriptures share that he was covered in diamonds, sapphire, emerald, gold. This guy was shining. It was very attractive to the eye for Eve. Not to get all legalistic or anything like that, but diamonds are girls what? Yeah. Isaiah 14 tells us Satan's fault had to do with his desire to be equal to or greater than God, to set his will against God's will. So now we all have a really good introduction to the next scene. So it begins. Genesis chapter 3, verses 1 through 6. Now the serpent was more cunning than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said to the woman, Has God indeed said you shall not eat of every tree of the garden? And the woman said to the serpent, we may eat the fruit of the trees of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God has said, You shall not eat it, nor shall you touch it, lest you die. Then the serpent said to the woman, You will not surely die, for God knows that in the day you eat of it, your eyes will be open, and you will be like God 
knowing good and evil. So when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, that it was pleasant to the eyes, and a tree desirable to make one wise, she took of its fruit and ate. She also gave to her husband with her, and he ate. And we shouldn't act surprised when we read of a possessed reptile. And throughout scriptures, we do read the demonic possessions of those of human and animal bodies. Throughout church history, there are numerous recordings of demonic possessions. But here we get a small glimpse of the enemy's tactics on the vulnerable and his strategy on causing us to sin. Now, church, don't think that the serpent went to the woman because she was a damsel in distress or think uh, the interpretation of Scripture, well, she's the weaker vessel. No. The, the vulnerable or weaker uh, is not uh, interpreted that way. Because God made her also in the likeness of man. Remember that value? That there was value within Eve. Because He made her in the likeness of Adam, which Adam was in the likeness of God. Both are of equal value. Ish, man, is the masculine. Isha is the feminine. So weaker vessel. The masculine man in general can just do more push-ups than her. That's it. That's the only thing that makes a difference in comparison to Eve. But Calvary Chapel Mountain Center... I want you guys to understand the vulnerability though is defined here is that Eve was susceptible to physical or emotional attack or harm. Why? Because she was separate from her husband. As we read, she's even in the garden within X amount of feet from the tree that she is not supposed to be around. In essence, it's the same mentality that I've heard uh, before. I only go to the bar for the peanuts and the games that are on the TV. That's it. No. Stay away. I only talk to other men or other women because they are nice and they compliment me. Don't do it. I only watch these shows when I'm bored. Don't do it. I'm only by myself because my wife or my husband doesn't like what I do. Now, sacrificial love, guys. The foundation should mirror body, soul, and spirit. Well, Mr. Pastor Man, I don't like sitting in the sun for eight hours while he's out there fishing or watching the ball game for three hours. Or quilting and talking, she sits there for hours. I can't do that. It's impossible. Whatever the case may be, you guys, be in agreement. Body, soul, and spirit. Pray how you can mirror what your, your wife or your husband want. It is definitely a hard one for me. You know, my uh, wife... She, she can't stand softball. She can't. I love softball. But you know what? She makes the sacrifice. And she goes out and she sees me. Grown man out there playing with other grown men. Playing this little kid game. You know, but she goes out there to support. And I know she'd rather be at home, out of the sun, in the AC, just watching something. Or reading something or doing something else other than that. But she does it. And it's a great thing for me to experience. So as Eve was basking in the garden and Adam was out there collecting fresh water or other type of fruits and herbs for dinner, we should see the importance of not allowing opportunities for division. Not allowing opportunities to entertain in our minds, in our bodies, and in our hearts for the enemy to come in. 
So a, a flood of scriptures should be coming through our minds as we just finished reading the scriptures. Seeing Adam not in the picture and Eve and this Satan coming in. So that flood of scriptures be, should be coming to mind of the full armor of God, Eve. A rooted and grounded, Eve. A light and salt. Working out your faith, Eve. Trusting in the Lord. Not entertaining and taking captive those thoughts. We must. The Holy Spirit helps us and guides us. Verse 2 looking back it says and the woman said to the serpent we may eat the fruit of the trees we're missing some words there not freely eat giving limitation on God's provisions of the garden but not of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden God has said you shall not eat nor shall you touch it lest you die minimizing God says not surely die that's not what he said he said you will surely die and she said lest you die and God again is very specific in his word and there is, is where Adam is, is more to blame because he had first hand knowledge he was responsible in passing on that communication from the Lord. But here we have the first communication breakdown. Here we see that it has been passed down from generation to generation. Thank you, Adam. We men are not great communicators to our wives. Well, most of us. But we read that Eve did in fact know about the command. And she passes down her own interpretation of the truth. And also religion. Of nor shall we touch it, lest you die. And some of you might experience this firsthand, depending on how old you guys are, or what movies you watch. Kissing at a young age leads to mouth sores. Don't do it. Dancing leads to making babies. Don't do it. So the over-exaggeration or legalistic perspective gives us an insight other than the Lord's. Here we also see that adding to the Word of God is a recipe for confusion and destruction. Even though we have good intentions, they are not God motives. Because this approach only pushes away those who do not understand or can lead others into the arms of those embracing false doctrine. You know, example, many see and hear rules, rules, rules. God wants to take away all the fun. No. God wants you to have fun. But He's showing you ways to receive joy in His Spirit and not in a bottle, a can, or a substance. Uh, not looking at things with lustful eyes. God wants you to be blessed, happy. Proverbs 16, 20. He who heeds the word wisely will find good. And whosoever trusts in the Lord, all caps there, happy is he. Then why all the rules? What, the Ten Commandments? Let me share. Don't kill. Honor your parents. Don't want what others want, don't worship idols, get some rest on the Sabbath, don't steal, don't tell lies. Really? Those are rules that you see as, as not having fun? These are great bumpers, great guidelines. And you guys remember bowling and they would have those bumpers and those bumpers were for us to uh, stay out of the gutter. It's for us to, to stay on track and stay in the game. It guides us to hit the target, not missing the mark. Which is what, church? It's an archery term. Sin. Not sinning. 
So Eve was in the area that was off limits. And now she's creating her own restrictions and minimizing the Lord's provisions. And oh, she's separated from her husband. Conversating with this Geico. I mean, creature. Perfect couple though. Perfect environment. And yet, we can see the dependence on each other and not that of the Lord. I shared, I'm not referring to the head of house or the order of marriage. I'm focusing on the individual. And we have to have an understanding of God's wisdom, God's spirit, and of God's foundation, church. Christians should live in the world but not be filled with it. Its ship is in the water. But if the water gets into the ship, the ship goes down to the bottom. So Christians, we are to, again, live in this world but not be of this world. I heard of an uh, illustration if you have a, a boiling pot of butter and you put a frog in there, that frog is going to jump right out. But if you place the frog in that butter and then you slowly turn on that burner and it begins to boil, that frog will not know any of the difference and he'll stay in there until he's boiled to death. That's what sin does. We need to be paying attention. That's the image we see from the garden with Eve. We cannot allow sin to enter into the garden church. And we can't entertain the conversations or the thoughts of evil. From the garden, man failed humanity. And would eventually get kicked out. But years later, another garden, a man would submit himself to humanity is known and if you know him this man, this Jesus he says you can be saved and we are so thankful for these scriptures to remind us again not just husbands, not just wives but all of us of where we should be focusing on how we need to be focusing on these things. Is it of the world or is it of God? The sacrifice that was made both God corrected. He saw the problem and he fixed it. And then years later he sent his son to die. Again because of man. This morning we are going to take from the Lord's table. And what a great opportunity that we have to bring to remembrance the sacrifice of our Heavenly Father. So as we prepare ourselves to take communion, we'd like for you guys to sit there and examine yourselves. Say, Lord, there's a tremendous sacrifice that you did for me. I'm not worthy, but you still did it. Knowing that I would sin, knowing that I would refuse, knowing that I would set my eyes on the things of the world, and yet you still died for me. Let's examine on that. Pastor Wally, can you come up and give me a hand with me? Like we've done in the past, we've just had individuals walk up. Uh, husbands, take your, your wife's portion, and those individuals just come up, and if you want to uh, give uh, a, a helping hand to your neighbor, um, if you guys came together, or you're limited on your walking and you would like to ask for two of the elements, just ask for two and we'll hand you two. If you want the, the, for you and your, your kiddos, you can have the kiddos come up as well and you can distribute out. But this time we'll start here and then work our way back and kind of keep that flow going. Pastor Wally has you guys and in the middle, you guys can fight over top of 27 and 29. Therefore, whoever eats his bread or drinks this cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner will be guilty of the body and the blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of the bread and drink of the cup. 
For he who eats and drinks in an unworthy manner eats and drinks judgment to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. As I shared earlier, it's an opportunity just to examine ourselves. We're, we're imperfect beings. But our focus is on the one who is perfect. He knows. He knows our struggles. So Lord, I pray for this body, for your children, Lord. You know the difficulties, Lord, that they face on a daily. And I pray, Lord, that you continue to mold them and shape them to the mighty men and mighty women of God that you call them to be. And if there's any here uh, this morning who do not know you or they walked away or maybe even has a uh, doubt in their heart, I just pray, Lord, that you meet them right where they are. That you tug on their heart, Lord. You may even seek after an elder to pray with. I just thank you again for this opportunity, Lord, as we uh, surrender ourselves, body, soul, and spirit to you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And continuing in 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 23 and 24. Actually, I'm going to go there with you guys. You guys haven't figured it out yet. You have two cups. The bottom piece is the bread and the top piece is the cup. Thanks to COVID, you know, eventually we're going to get out of this little phase, okay? 1 Corinthians chapter 11 verses 23 to 24. For I received from the Lord that which I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus on the same night in which he was betrayed took bread and when he had given thanks he broke it and said, take eat. This is my body which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Oh, with that little cracker in hand. Let's pray. Oh, Father God, this small little token, Lord, is just a remembrance, Lord, for us to, to know that you gave your body bruised and beaten, humiliated for our sakes. So I pray, Father God, that we in turn, Lord, can be the, the men and women who will sacrifice our bodies to give you honor and glory. We thank you for this opportunity to give you honor. And may we remember this in our everyday. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let's partake. With cup in hand. Verses 25 and 26. In the same manner, he also took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death till he comes. Oh, Father God, we are so blessed. Lord. And without the, uh, the, this bloodshed, Lord, there would be no remission of our sins, Lord. And so we are, again, humbled servants, your children, to partake in this communion to give you honor of that sacrifice. And may we, in turn, Lord, with our inward relationship, show outwardly our love for you sacrificially. And may we reflect that body, soul, and spirit. And it's in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Let's partake. Pat, do we have Philippians 2? Philippians chapter 2, verse 13 through 16. I'm going to read it on the overhead. For it is God who works in you both to will and to do for his good pleasure. To do all things without complaining and disputing. That you may become blameless and harmless children of God without fault in the midst of a crooked and perverse generation among whom you shine as lights in the world. Holding fast the word of life so that I may rejoice in the day of Christ that I have not run in vain or labored in vain. Now Paul 
always given us some really good instructions for us. What a great opportunity, church, to hear God's word, to worship, and to continue to bask in that glory. And as we leave here from the Lord's table, we get to go out there and to fellowship, to share that love, to share that likeness, body, soul, and spirit. Not doing it in vain, Paul says. Man, I, I hope I, I did everything right. I hope I ran the race. That way you can see the sacrifices. And it's all because of the Lord. Body, soul, and spirit. After service, we do have elders for those who do need prayer and would like to have prayer. Or maybe even to know more about what we talked about today. But I'm going to pray over you guys as we leave. And we do have... Uh, uh, snacks in the hospitality room, um, sugar, basically, for you guys. And just continue to be a blessing again to one another and pray for families who, there's some folks that are not here who are dealing with health issues. You know, and again, just be in prayer. Maybe those who have uh, fallen away from the Lord. Be the example of church. Be the church that cares, that shows the love of Christ. And again, pray for our little ones as they have a good time, a blessed time up on, on the mountaintop across the way. Um, let's pray. Father God, we do thank you, Lord, for your word. I pray for your children, Lord, my brothers and sisters, Lord, the marriages and the families and the individuals that are represented here uh, this morning, Lord. I pray you continue to be in the center of their lives. Guide them, direct them, fill their days with strength that, that comes from you, the joy and happiness and peace, Lord, that comes from you. That, passes, that surpasses all understanding, Lord. We know through your scriptures, Lord, that you truly love us. So I pray, Lord, that we reflect and we mirror that body, soul, and spirit as we leave here and, get, and be with us for the remainder of this week, Lord. We thank you again for all that you have done, are doing, and will continue to do. And it's in Jesus' precious name. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen. God bless you guys. See you outside.